Welcome to TV Burp. Cheryl drops one on the X Factor. Do you know what? It's sometimes, it's sometimes with your stage presence and your... Sometimes... <laughs> Head on a lilo on casualty. <laughs> and Hagrid from Harry Potter turns up on Antiques Roadshow. John Dixon. Right. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I always like to copy what the dancers do on Strictly. Well, as I'm sitting down, uh, it's usually only the arms. It's harder than it looks, that. I must say, it's nice to see Gillian McKeith back on the box. Sean, you said it was true. And you're correct, it was <laughs> true. <laughs> you're <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. I'm a celebrity, get me out of his back. <laughs> What exactly are Gillian's qualifications? Well, she's certainly a celebrity. Oh, compared to Agro Santos, anyway. <laughs> but is she cut out for life in the jungle? I really have a serious phobia that is massive, you know, to the point that I could faint if I see a spider. I mean, I, I feel like I'm having a heart attack. It's like a serious panic attack when I see them. It's like a nightmare. I'm in a living nightmare. Yes, she is. <laughs> It's not only insects she's scared of, she seemed to have Sean Ryder phobia. Hmm, an irrational fear of Sean Ryder. Ah! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> what is he? Hey, it's Sean Ryder! <laughs> so she's a little jumpy, but I'm sure she'll rise to the bush tucker challenge. Look at don't look at anything else. Yes! Oh. Look at me, don't look at anything else. Ah! Don't. <laughs> don't. 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 You're okay, you're okay, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> You're OK. Look at me. Look up here. Look. Look. Forget about what's going on. I thought he was coming in there. Stay there. You're OK. You're OK. I've got you. You've done really well. You have done very, very well. You know, I think she might win. <laughs> oh, excuse me for a moment, but uh, if you bear with me, it's, uh, it's pretty good fun. Lots, as ever, to look forward to with Martin later in the programme. And indeed, I hope. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome watch. And what I like about Kate Humble is it doesn't matter if it's comedy or tragedy. She always manages to <laughs> she always manages to get the tone just right. It's very noticeable that when you're feeding birds in the garden, you can have all sorts of chaffinches, blue tits, green finches, but there's nearly only usually one robin. And they will fight to the death sometimes. Um, we see them displaying, they have all sorts of postures, but eventually they'll they'll go in with the beak. And something like 10% of, of all robins will die at the hands of another robin. Lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the other attraction of Autumn Watch is the outside experts, who offer their own insights into animal behaviour. But obviously it's not enough to just repeat what Autumn Watch regular Martin has just said, is it, Dominic Cousins? So, do you mean that they need a bit of extra energy in case they have to escape from the tornado? That's right, to be a little bit extra vigilant. And that is the conclusion they came to. It's scientists. that yeah. marginal. That it is literally that right marginal. on the edge. You know, right right on the edge, yeah. So, so the young ones are coming back like cannon fodder. They're a bit like cannon fodder. Yeah. <laughs> four right at the bottom of the heat. Right at the bottom of the heat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, there was an animal with a very interesting problem this week on... Uh, very interesting problem. On, on, <laughs> On Channel 4's... On, on Channel 4's... Animal Madhouse. Animal Madhouse. <laughs> Dominic, do you mind? Dominic, do you mind? Just stop it. Just stop it. It's getting annoying. It's getting annoying. Oh! <laughs> there was... There was an animal with a very interesting problem on Channel 4's Animal Madhouse this week. How can I help with Sherman today? Well, he's got a few behavioural problems. He's getting quite aggressive uh, towards my kittens. Mm, yeah, an aggressive tortoise. Mm. I didn't know they could get aggressive. Uh-oh. 
Ow! It's a tortoise, and he seems to be in a bad mood. He's coming for me! Hopefully, by the time he gets here, he'll have worked off some of the aggression. <laughs> well, uh, well, this week I thought I might. Why are you so angry? I'm basically shy and I express that through aggression. You know what you need to do? You know what? You need to get out of your shell more. Come on! It's like you don't want to be entertained. Off you go. Uh, now, talking of aggressive tortoises, I think I spotted one called Nick on The Apprentice this week. I appreciate that it's a blue screen and it's somebody sat in front of a live background and that's him reacting to it. I, I, I personally... <laughs> It's The Apprentice! <laughs> Ram bam 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 bim bam biddly bomb. Ram bam 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 biddly biddly bomb. You're fired. This week, they were off to Pymut Studios. Pymut Studios, what's that? I've absolutely no idea what Pinewood is, eh? Pinewood Studios is a... I'm sure it's a furniture store. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, yeah. yeah. Just next door to World of Leather, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're down to the last nine, and still hanging in there is Stuart Baggs, the brand. So, what is the brand exactly? People aspire to have a, a flash sports car, maybe a house in the country. I've got all that already. I'm an amazing salesman and an amazing pitcher. I'm confident, I'm unique, and I'm successful. Just shut up for a minute, will you? <laughs> I, I won't speak again. I have to rein in my own extreme masculinity in this task. <laughs> Hasta la vista, gravy. <laughs> I can't make a decision. I need everything spoon-fed to me. Where's a spoon? Where's a spoon? I am Stuart Bags, the brand. Yeah, the, the brand that we call annoying. <laughs> he certainly seemed to be winding up Lord Sugar. Let me ask you something. If he was working for me, and you've got all this stuff in your head, yep. and I'm relying and trusting upon yep. you, and unfortunately you got run over by a number six bus, <laughs> where'd that leave me? What do you mean, unfortunately? <laughs> the task this week was to set up a business in Westfield Shopping Centre selling DVDs of members of the public against a blue screen background of a racetrack. But there was a problem. Right, guys, you're here to pick up your DVD? Fantastic. We'll just play this through for you quickly, and then we can settle up after. Is that OK? And customers that do come back get more than they bargained for. In the end, he's been another guy. Another child. Another child? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. What happened? Apparently, another child popped up. At the end? Yeah. Another guy pops up on the DVD. What good's that? Although he was quite cute, wasn't he? <laughs> ah. Actually, I had a go on Apollo's stand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stuart. Sort of. <laughs> well, it's great to see Alan Titchmarsh back doing what he does best, the gardening. <laughs> and in his new series, he shares with us some garden secrets. I'm going to reveal these gardens' innermost secrets and how they've inspired gardeners across the country. Every morning, I step into this garden and I feel like I've gone on holiday. Mm, me too. When I step into my garden, it's a bit like going on holiday. If I ever decide to go on holiday to Dogmuck World. <laughs> I do try and pick it up, but it has been wet, hasn't it? 
One of Alan's secrets was how to make a fake box tree hedge. You're wondering what on earth I'm making, aren't you? Well, it will all become clear very shortly. I've now got a cube. It's not a cube. <laughs> it's a cuboid. Take it. Of course, you can have your bush cut into a variety of shapes in the old tradition of topiary. Christine Facer has created a modern topiary garden inspired by the clipped birds she found here. But they've morphed into different shapes and sizes now, and one can't really work out what birds they are. Some are peacocks, some look like sparrows. Yeah, no, I, I like topiary peacocks. <laughs> but then I like topiary sparrows. But... Which is better? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> See you after the break. Come on, Mr. Token Sparrow. Welcome back to Tigerberg. Katie Wasel Ant on Ancient Worlds. Rather than the cooperation of autonomous clans, the BRB... <laughs> Villagers frightened of a mobile phone on Emmerdale. Girl, Sam, I don't suppose you... <laughs> and Smoking Bum on Garrow's Law. He insists that I love you. I wonder what Sir Trevor MacDonald is up to these days. <laughs> of course not! No, this was Channel 4's The Family. Yes, The Family's back! Yeah! yeah. But it's a different family. Oh. But they're just as much fun! Yeah! Yeah, still as action-packed as ever. turn of the Adishina family, headed by traditional Nigerian parents, Mum Vicky and Dad Sunday. Sunday is the head of the household. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Sunday's birthday. It's funny, really. When they say I'm 60, I just look at myself. I don't feel like 60. <laughs> I don't feel like 60 at all. I just look at myself. It's funny to me when they say I'm 60. I don't feel 60. Well, you are. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. I'm going to do it now, I want to do it. Back on the job, Joe Swash now, in which the EastEnder and I'm a Celeb winner, Joe Swash, went back to some of the old jobs of his youth. Joe told us of a game his family used to play called Football Ear. I remember my uncle Chris playing Football Ear. My granddad played football here, my dad played football here. Yeah. Football here, yeah. <laughs> Not sure of the rules. Whatever he's done in the past, his sister Shana reckons there was only ever one option. I don't think there's any job out there that Joe could have done apart from acting, because he truly, truly does love it to pieces, and he's fantastic, and people love him. Well, not everyone. <laughs> In his younger days, he did have a brief spell as a fireman, so the show took him back and showed him what might have been. Sweep the floor, see if you can find a casualty. No, the stairs to the right. Stairs to the right, yes. Stairs up in front of us. Okay, Joe, we're going to go upstairs. 
Okay, sweep those stairs, Joe. Up we go, as quick as we can. Yeah. Don't forget to stab them, Joe. It's in front of me. Okay, give it a search. What is it, Joe? Ah! It's Wagbo, and he's smoking. Half Mary Byrne, half Wagner was the creature that they call Wagbo. Last week, it stole Simon Specs oh, over glasses. Then, it teamed up with an aggressive tortoise. <laughs> For their own safety, Simon ordered the X Factor contestants to be guarded by Phil Mitchell off EastEnders. <laughs> Saturday, it's Mummy, Mary, thought she spotted her baby in the crowd. Wet ball was in the audience. His parents appealed for calm. We just want Wagbo to calm down. Hey, take it easy. We can't go on much longer. If you're watching, son, just come home. Sorry, love, this kill's closed. As the celebrities headed off to the jungle, little did they know, there's a Wagbo on board! Wagbo! Will no one stop the Wagbo? Will you? Keep an eye out for him in your area. I wonder what's going on down on Coach Trip. Business as usual. <laughs> Actually, this was Celebrity Coach Trip. Yeah. yeah, and the group headed off to Pilsen to take part in a puppet workshop. And isn't it funny when you end up looking like your puppet? I now pronounce you, uh... <laughs> Then David Van Day and Tony Blackburn joined the bus. They're two pretty popular people, aren't they? Well, they found out when it came to the vote-off. Tonight. We are voting for Tony and David. We, we felt that sometimes, perhaps, instead of just being yourself, you were doing things that you thought you should be doing that the audience would want. Yeah, well, you know, fair enough. It was only because Carol felt they weren't being themselves. Tonight, we're voting for Tony and David. Sorry, guys, if we'd have known you had got two votes before us, we wouldn't have done it, honestly, wouldn't. We've done it last on, first off. Yeah, there's nothing personal about it, just last on, first off. Tonight, we're voting for David and Tony. Everything personal, I can't bear you. I really don't dislike you intensely, David. So it is completely personal. I know how you are off screen, and I really don't like you. Well, don't, don't sit on the fence, Cheryl. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. David Van Day is the person that I hate more than anyone on this, on this planet. About it, was it Cheryl that tampered with David's transportation? But another newcomer is determined not to be outshone. <laughs> Which brings us to a new item that I'm calling, well, I certainly didn't expect to see that. I've seen so many things since I've been doing this show, from Wagbo to a piano playing cat. Anything is possible, or so they say, but... Oh, oh, Brendan! <laughs> I certainly didn't expect to see you that. <laughs> certainly didn't expect to see something of that nature. Mm. Nigella Kitchen now. Hey! Actually, since I've been watching Nigella, I've started doing a bit of cooking myself. Yeah, I, I made this tart. <laughs> All I need to do now is uh, put the cream on, and of course, you do have to be very, that's it, very careful when you're putting your cream on. This is a very beautiful wine cooler, which obviously came into my life because I needed somewhere to park my pastry bag. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, 
This week, Nigella was off on a culinary journey. I've got the whole world right here. I am a fully committed kitchen tourist. In fact, I'm a frequent flyer. I go to Asia for a sensationally simple chicken teriyaki with rice stick noodles and sugar snap peas. Italy is one of my favourite destinations and I'm off there for a rum-scented Venetian carrot cake with mascarpone cream. Yeah, well, I went to Turkey on Friday night with a donna kebab. <laughs> <laughs> then on to Switzerland with a ski yoghurt and then to the doctors with watery diarrhoea. <laughs> Some of the stuff she uses in her recipes are not necessarily that easy to get hold of. To go with the linguine, I'm not choosing merely an ingredient. I have a precious potion in the form of the white truffle oil. What I love about the way Italians cook is they know how to make food special while keeping it simple. They don't go in for somehow a whole orchestra of blaring trumpets. They choose a beautiful trumpet solo played by my truffle oil to serenade me for my romantic dinner for one. Yeah, a bottle of oil that plays a trumpet solo. It's a, a nice idea. And so to celebrate the royal wedding, here he is. Take it away! <laughs> That's all from us. Good night. And fear not, it doesn't have to stop there. Harry Hill's TV burp Gold 3 is coming soon to DVD. Kelly Osborne will sit opposite Piers Morgan this evening for a very candid chat. Life Stories is after I'm a Celebrity at 10.25. And then there were eight. Next, oh yes, it's The X Factor.